It's Wednesday, December 9th, and the time for your Barbados to get my news update. Government's Barbados Employment and Sustainable Transformation, or BEST, program is not ideal for some hoteliers. That's the contention of hotelier Gordon Seal, who argued that the program is funding losses and could possibly drive hoteliers out of business. Speaking at the Barbados Yacht Club's luncheon yesterday, Seal revealed that his two hotels, Bougainvillea Resort and Sugar Bay Barbados, which employ 480 people, were bleeding astronomically and up to November had recorded a combined net loss of $450,000 each month. And he said that that did not factor in loss of business. Basically, in other words, the scheme is funding losses and will dilute ownership of the hotels. How can anyone who understands the program claim that government is looking after the businesses at the expense of labor? It's just a mystery, and this is what's been put out there in public all the time and has fed this, this our business of you know, people being unreasonable and unfair to staff and everything else. The best program, the best plan, looks after labor when the hotels run up debt. Furthermore, how they run up the debt is the hotel still has a service liability hanging around its neck. So in other words, those people who go into the best program, but they, they continue with their full service, and it's a big, it's a cost that we see has come up now and could come up again. The conversion of preference shares into common shares after the dilution of ownership, especially for the financially weak local hotels, could result in a change of ownership of the hotels, possibly to government. Sill said instead of the best plan, he would have preferred for the unemployment insurance to be extended until the arrival numbers reached a predetermined point. Barbados should not move away from tourism as its main economic driver. That's the view of former Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., William Billy Griffith, who believes an enormous effort must now be made to revitalize that sector to ensure it remains the country's leading foreign exchange earner. He made the comments while speaking at the Barbados Yacht Club's luncheon on the topic, the way forward in tourism, the role of the Barbados Yacht Club. We pondered the fate of tourism as its relevance was brought into question. It was important to remember that in several iterations, tourism had proven to be, especially in Barbados, one of the most resilient industries, even in the bleakest of circumstances. We also have to consider how long it would take to develop another industry on this island. In less than ideal circumstances, to simply transform it into the revenue earner that tourism has been. Juxtaposing these options cemented the revitalization of tourism as the way forward for Barbados. The reality is that the phenomenon of tourism has been cemented in the global economy and its rapid growth throughout the years has been undeniable. However, Griffith maintained that an overhaul of the tourism product was necessary, as COVID-19 had showed several flaws in the industry. In other news, talks between Liat and officials from Barbados and Saint Vincent and Grenadines continues. The update from the regional airline's court-appointed administrator, Cleveland Seaforth, comes four days after the carrier was forced to stop commercial flights into the two countries on the grounds that it needed new flight arrangements to operate. Speaking to ABS News, uh, Seaforth revealed that there was now a possibility that CARICOM may intervene in the matter. The latest is this. We continue to have discussions with Barbados and St. Vincent. The, the problems are not the same. In St. Vincent, the issue surrounds us. Uh, we would like to handle ourselves when we fly in. We actually, we took back on staff, we trained them. Uh, but the airport authority in St. Vincent want to do the handling and not Liat. And so we are, we are in dialogue with them on the matter. And my expectation is that with respect to St. Vincent, we should have an answer from the board of directors on Friday. Uh, 
discussions continue with Barbados, we cannot quite get a response from them as yet. However, uh, within the last 24 hours or so, CARICOM has approached the company to find out what is the position and ask to be presented with the information which we did give them, both in respect of Barbados and St. Vincent. And my understanding, it is possible that CARICOM may make some intervention to try to resolve the matter. There's regional and international news after this short break. from the region, Bermuda's COVID-19 case count climbs to 330 as the country recorded 24 new cases in just one day. The Health Minister Kim Wilson gave a breakdown of the numbers at a press conference yesterday. Many of the positive cases, she said, were asymptomatic. One of the new cases is classified as imported with the details as follows. One resident who arrived on Delta's flight, sorry, on Delta Flight 617 from New York on the 28th of November 2020 and tested positive on their day eight test, having had a negative pre-arrival test and a negative arrival test. 16 of the new cases are classified as local transmission with known contact or sources with the details are as follows. Four residents who were all already under quarantine as close contacts, two household and two workplace of known cases, 12 residents who were associated with known clusters. The remaining seven new cases are classified as under investigation. These cases are amongst residents who had no history of travel or any currently identified links to any other known cases or clusters. Bermuda now has 330 total confirmed positive cases and their status is as follows. There are 98 active cases of which 96 are under public health monitoring and two are hospitalized with one in critical care. A total of 233 have recovered and the total deceased remains at nine. And finally, U.S. President-elect Joe Biden has set a goal of 100 million COVID-19 vaccinations in his first 100 days in office. He said his first months would not end the outbreak and gave few details on rollout strategy, but said he would change the course of the pandemic. More in this Reuters TV report. President-elect Joe Biden and U.S. President Donald Trump sent Americans vastly different messages on the coronavirus on Tuesday as U.S. cases crossed the 15 million mark. There's a team of world-class experts. Biden formally introduced key members of his health team that will lead his administration's response to the pandemic, including California's Attorney General Javier Becerra as HHS Secretary, and articulated three goals. Masking vaccinations, opening schools, developed together with Dr. Anthony Fauci. Biden vowed to enforce mask wearing at the federal level where possible and to get Americans 100 million vaccines in his first 100 days. My first 100 days won't end the COVID-19 virus. I can't promise that. But, but, we did not get into this mess quickly. We're not going to get out of it quickly. It's going to take some time. Biden appointed Fauci as his chief medical advisor on COVID-19 and said he'd continue in his current role as director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Fauci was notably absent from Trump's Operation Warp Speed event at the White House, where Trump celebrated the breakneck speed of new vaccines for the coronavirus. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. 
We also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.